Hello. Welcome, welcome to this uh, meeting. Pull up a, a chair or a log. Imagine yourself arriving in this uh, clearing in the forest where we're meeting. And uh, as you do this, um, do say where you're from. It's uh, just type in where you're from. It's a way of including yourself. Uh, and and then have a look at other people and where they're from, because that's a fascinating moment. And uh, lots of little hearts and thumbs are flying across Alabama. Yes. And so as you see people arriving, it's just the same, really, uh, or very similar to how it would be if you were sitting in a clearing at a gathering. And gradually you see people coming from Norway and Lincolnshire and Derbyshire and the Netherlands and just gradually gathering this beautiful primal activity. And, you know, it's the equinox uh, tomorrow, 4.15 in the afternoon to be exact. And so I thought it would be a good idea for us to have a retreat together. Last week I talked about this idea of a mini retreat or a micro retreat. Look, we've got the Isle of Wight and Glastonbury and Brazil and Ithaca and Ulster. Ah, it's lovely. Um, so yes, so last, last week I, I, I talked about this idea of a mini retreat and the way in which we can dip in you know, it may not be possible for us to organize to go away to some beautiful, special, sacred place uh, for a few days on retreat. But we can actually have little retreats often, maybe even every day. And there's a the way in which, you know, in a way, our nighttime is a retreat as we drift into sleep and come out again. Sydney, Australia. Hooray. Florida, Sweden. Fantastic. The Breckens. Brecken. Um, Colorado. Lovely. So, so, so tomorrow is the spring equinox up in the Northern Hemisphere and it's freezing. It's absolutely freezing here. There's, it looks very pretty outside. There's snow on the trees and it wasn't quite this cold when I participated in my first Druid ceremony. And that was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, uh, virtually to this day, um, Nguyen invited me to participate in the spring equinox ceremony on uh, Parliament Hill in London. And uh, it was bitterly cold. And my task was to hold up with a fellow acolyte. Our task was to hold up a kind of wicker um, uh, canopy over the, uh, the representative of the spring, Lady Caridwin Cariadwin. And it's the only time in my life when I've uh, seen my hands go blue. Uh, it was so cold. And so my induction into Druidry was, was uh, a painful one. Uh, and um, as I stood in the ceremony holding this, this thing up, looking at my hands going blue, wondering how long I could tolerate this, um, I, I, well, looking back on it, I don't know why I persevered. Any sane person would have just said, this isn't for me and would have taken off. But this is the thing about our, destiny, I think, in our spiritual lives, is that there are more forces at work than simply logic. Logic would have told me just to, to leave at once. Uh, but I stayed. And of course, I'm terribly glad that I stayed. And in a way, you know, the spring equinox is a funny time in Britain because it's usually pretty awful. March is a pretty awful uh, month in, in Britain, I have to say. And, uh, you know, you've had maybe six months, five months of of winter and you're really tired and funnily enough even though the spring is coming because the daffodils are out and the hyacinths are out uh, and the snowdrops and the primroses they're all out it's very pretty in the garden all peeking their way above the snow even though the flowers are out and sometimes we have sunny days it actually feels very wintry and it's hard to contact the fire within you know the way we look forward to the spring. We tell ourselves, oh, when the spring comes, I'll be feeling happier. I'll be feeling more energized. Um, but it's hard. And and of course, in a way, that's a kind of metaphor, I think, for what's happening in the world. You know, things are so hard in the world at the moment. The political situation, the, uh, the news that we hear on the television, things are hard. And we want to feel hope. We want to feel the warmth of love 
and connection, which is why these meetings are so important, I think, and why the spiritual path is important too. But it can be hard. And uh, a clue is given to us in the Druid name for this ceremony, which is Olban Isla, the light of the earth. So there's almost a suggestion there that there's light inside the earth, that there's a warmth and a light inside the earth that is gradually, we're used to the idea of light coming down from us, from the sun, but there's also a way in which it's kind of coming up from, for, for us too. And so, so I thought, let's really tune into that warmth and let's take this idea of a micro retreat in two ways. One is using the time we have together, the 20 minutes or so that we're going to spend together as just a time to resource ourselves, to slow down, to connect into our soul. And at the same time, to tune to the rhythms of the planet and the outer world. At the same time to bathe in the connection and the community that we have here all together. And so we can, uh, we can feel all this and use this as a time just to settle and to recharge. And what I'll suggest we do is we do exactly what we do in a Druid ceremony where we kind of go into an altered state or a different state. We then have a central activity and then we come out again and, and finish. So, so what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to uh, invite us into this, the sacred circle. We're already in that, but I'll, we'll build on that now in our imaginations, in our visualization. And uh, I'll read you some text and uh, in that we'll we'll have a little Eisteddfod, uh, drinking poetry, drinking in a little bit of poetry. I'll talk a little bit and then I'll finish with a text as well and we'll, we'll come out of it. So that, that follows the structure of a ceremony. And we begin a ceremony by often by saying, let all disturbing thoughts be laid aside. And then we're outside the circle and then we lay aside our disturbing thoughts and then we come into the circle. And so in coming into the circle, I'd invite you to do that now. Just leave all disturbing thoughts aside. Just, and just be fully present to being in the circle with your companions who are all over the world. But they're all gathered here in this special place that we're seated in together. And we can feel the energy and the protection of the grove we can feel the earth and even though the earth is cold despite that we can feel a warmth coming up from the earth we know deep deep down there is of course tremendous heat in the earth we can feel the warmth of spring flying up into us and that energy of greenery starting to grow, the, the life in the seed starting to awaken. We can start to feel that in our own energy fields, in our physical bodies. And then we look up at the sky and maybe all the stars are out in the sky. Maybe the sun is shining and you breathe in the energy of the sky and you just feel that energy flowing down into you. For me, it's the dawn, the sun is rising, and I can feel that sunlight flowing down into our grove and into my body too. And so see if you can feel the energy of the earth meeting the energy of the sky within the center of your being. And around you, you sense the protection of the trees, the energy of these wonderful tree beings, these tree spirits. Our friends and companions close to us being with us in the stillness and in the beauty and taking in a deep breath allowing ourselves just to be open to being here I'm going to say a prayer for you 
uh, which is an adaptation of the old Celtic uh, prayer of deep peace. Uh, uh, and it's been adapted by, by Donovan. He's, he's, he's added to the lyrics and uh, it's a lovely example of old and new, uh, the contribution of modern, a modern bard to, to an old piece. And, and here's this blessing. It's a lovely blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace, deep peace. Deep peace of the sleeping stones to you. Deep peace of the wandering wind to you. Deep peace of the flock of stars to you. Deep peace, deep peace. Deep peace of the eastern wind to you. Deep peace of the western wind to you. Deep peace of the northern wind to you. Blue wind of the south to you. Pure red of the whirling flame to you. Pure white of the silver moon to you. Pure green of the emerald grass to you. Deep peace. Deep peace. And so you see how this wonderful swirling colour, you might imagine yourself now sitting in the grove, seeing all this swirling colour around you and the blessings of the elements. Notice how you've got the air, water, fire and earth. You've got the stones, the wind, the stars above, and then the different winds, east, west, north and south, and the flame and the moon and the emerald grass. Just just wonderful and if affirming you know one of these central ideas we have in Druidry that we are, are fed by the world of nature we are completely at one with the world of nature we are part of nature and nature feeds us and we feed it and we put our palms of our hands on the earth and we feel our love flowing from our heart through to the palms of your hands down into the earth. And it's in these times of sheltering in the, in the arms of Mother Earth that the power of a, of a retreat uh, becomes manifest. And I, I, I picked for our meeting uh, this card from the Druid Plant Oracle. And what we're doing now is, you know, I mentioned how um, the very first Druid meeting I went to was holding this uh, canopy up and watching my hands go blue. But then I went to a Grove meeting that Nguyen had uh, uh, called in London, in central London. And I went into a room and we, we followed exactly this process that we're doing now of having a little ritual, a little ceremony, a poem, something to let us change gears from our everyday concerns to be in a more peaceful place. And then Nguyen would chat, he would talk, he'd talk about some aspect of Druidry, uh, sometimes about practical arrangements for the next ceremony that we were going to do. Uh, and then we'd have a meditation and then we'd finish. And so we're doing exactly the same thing in this, in this virtual way. And so I, I want to talk to you about this card, which is the card in some ways for of the retreat in the uh, new edition of um, the Druid plant oracle they've made the image even bigger and you can you can see there it's it's an image it's from the card called the restorers and the image is of a healer looking out into the highlands of scotland or perhaps out into the mountains of snowdonia and she's got a mortar and pestle and there are three three plants that uh, she's working with there and you'll see on the uh, on the table she's got St John's Ward, which uh, you probably know has been found to be extremely helpful in in lifting people's moods. It's now prescribed to, to a great extent in France and Germany, where they're very good on phytotherapy. And conventional medicine is very uh, accepting of it and uses it. Um, and then we have rose. Everything's there, rose roots, there's yellow flowers there, rose roots, rhodiola rosei, and valerian. 
Uh, Valerian, whoop, there we go. Valerian is there hanging in bunches. Now, Valerian, you may also know, is, is used, it's prescribed as a, um, for anxiety to help, to help you sleep. Um, it's prescribed in France and Germany as much as um, big pharma alternatives. It's prescribed hugely. And, um, but Rhodiola rosea is something I wanted to draw your attention to because that's le less well known. Its common name is rose roots. Uh, uh, Dr. Angela Payne, who wrote uh, Celtic Healing Herbs, believes that it was probably uh, one of the sacred herbs of the Druids. It grows in uh, the rocky coastlines of northwest Britain, in the mountains in Wales, and up in Scotland. And it grows in Siberia as well. And, uh, and 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 Russia, and it has a tremendously uh, uh, it has a wonderful. It's the Druid ginseng, if you like. That's what uh, that's what Angela Payne suggests. It's the Druid ginseng that stimulates cognitive function. It's an adaptogen, which means that it goes where it's needed, uh, and it's great if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling a little low, and and you need a boost. Uh, stimulates the uh, immune system hugely. Do, do a little Google around it, um, or rather, I should say, Ecosia around it, because Ecosia is the alternative to Google that plants trees, and they've planted 20 million or so. Uh, so, so it, have a look on Ecosia, Rhodiola rosea. I'll put up a link on the blog as well. Um, Julie Babis is saying she uses Valerian at night quite often, uh, and the reason why those three. Uh, plants are there on that card is because they all represent the link, the mind-body connection, the way in which taking plants can, certain kinds of plants can affect our emotional and psychological states and thereby assist our, our journey through life really and uh, assist us both physically, if you take uh, rhodiola, for instance, assist us physically by strengthening the immune system, uh, assist us psychologically by stimulating our cognitive function, and assist us mo emotionally by helping with our mood states as well. And so I'd like to think that a kind of druid healing uh, would, would involve a kind of spiritual psychotherapy uh, in which the therapist uh, recognized the spiritual nature of the human being, but also was cognizant of all the psychological dynamics that work as well, and acts as an anamkara, a soul friend to uh, their client. And at the same time, perhaps they're a healer too, or they have a colleague they can recommend who is able to work with plants like rose roots and St. John's wort and uh, and Valerian. And so um, Finney MacArthur is saying half of America is on new tropics. I'm not sure if he's referring to that geographically or, or is that some kind of pharmaceutical reference. Uh, I'm very aware that I'm talking about the spring equinox and um, I'm going to New Orleans uh, in a few days and it, it's, it's very warm there. I know it's not cold everywhere, but I'm speaking uh, from my experience here. And the equinox on the other side of the world is the autumn equinox, of course, but it's also a time to open to this question of balance, and a time that can be strangely stressful as one makes the change from one, one state to another. Um, Katie McMahon is making a very good point. Ask your physician, though, if you're taking pharmaceutical antidepressants, because they will react. And some people don't react well to St. John's Ward. Which is why um, I said, uh, you know, my idea of a therapy would be to work with a colleague who was familiar with this. Uh, so ideally, you want a, a medical herbalist to prescribe or to work with with uh, with these plants. So um, we opened our little retreat in this grove here with me reading to you the um, deep peace uh, prayer which actually isn't that old because it was, I, I believe it came from Fiona uh, McLeod uh, uh, in the, uh, when was that? The early 20th century, late 19th century. Uh, and then Donovan came and added to it and changed it a little bit. And, 
Um, and, and I think that's really important because it shows that we're talking about a living tradition. Uh, it's not set in stone. We, you might be inspired to find different wording, using some of that wording, but different wording. That's, that's we are not in the restaurant, we're in the kitchen. Uh, there are ingredients that the ancestors have handed to us, but they want us to roll up our sleeves and get involved and to make new and fresh food. And so when we go on retreats within a Druid uh, perspective, uh, we might draw on the old tradition and the old ideas, but we'll also be open to the new as well. And let's finish our meeting with um, another uh, little uh, short blessing, which uh, if you try to research it, you'll find that some people say it's an ancient Irish blessing. Uh, other people say that it's an ancient Indian blessing because it was in fact used by a uh, group called 3HO, uh, an Indian uh, yoga group. Uh, and they probably still do use it where they, where they sing it. Uh, it's also sung by the Sikh singer, Snatan Kaur, beautifully. Um, and so some people have misattributed it to India or to ancient times in Ireland. But actually uh, it came from a, a, a song called A Very Cellular Song by the Incredible String Band. And one of the members of the Incredible Spring, String Band, uh, Robin Williamson, is a tremendous bard uh, living in, in Britain. And he, uh, he comes and plays at some of the Druid events here in, in, in Britain. And, um, and this is, this is the, the blessing. And so now if, if uh, we imagine again that we're uh, sitting, um, sitting in the clearing, all those energies of the winds and the flames and the sun and the moon and the stars, all these colors are with us. And we breathe in the energy of the trees around us, the sky above us and the earth beneath us. And we feel at peace, we feel rested, opening to the light of the earth, opening to the blessings all around us, the blessings of life that flow through us. And we say this blessing, I'll say it, but we, we're saying it to all of us, to each other, just as we look around the circle and we see all our companions. Yeah. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide you all the way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide you all the way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide you all the way on. And so if you slowly open your eyes, feeling the light within you now, We've been talking about the light in the earth, the light coming down from the sky, the light around you, but also the light within each of us. And now sensing that light shining from us, we give thanks to all our brothers and sisters around us and send our gratitude and our blessings to them. And we place our hands on the ground and we give thanks. And in particular, I'd like to give thanks and to send a blessing to Anna Campbell, a lovely young woman who, who died yesterday, uh, who comes from Lewis. And, um, and uh, I'm just thinking about her a lot and sending her lots of love and you may have your own blessings that you want to send 
to loved ones, to people you know. May all the world be blessed. May all our lives be blessed. And so, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Um, if you can think of, the, on this theme of the mini retreat, if, uh, if any ideas come to you, particular techniques that work for you, ways in which you find you can dip in to resource yourself, to recharge, even if it's just for a few moments, uh, do share them with us. Uh, I'll be reading your comments when, when I, when I uh, finish the broadcast and I, I'll look at it again during the week. And um, on Wednesday, I'm off to New Orleans to the Gulf Coast Gathering, a uh, big druid gathering there of the order. Um, if, if I don't broadcast next week, there will be somebody here who knows. I'll try if I can get broadband. It might be me or it might be a mystery guest. Uh, let's see. Anyway, goodbye to you and lots of love and uh, hope to be with you again soon. Okay, bye.